Welcome to today's broadcast. This is Pastor Jonathan Morgan. And we're talking about, we're talking about the devil and about, and about his demons and about the fact that God, through Christ, gave us authority over all of them. And because of that fact, God absolutely has commanded us not to fear them. There's to be no fear. And uh, uh, one of the scriptures we talked about last session and that I just want to reread here, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, God said, God said, have I not commanded you? So God's pretty serious about this. He said, have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now I want to just want to say a comment here. Uh, I know some people, they, 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 they go to horror films, movies. Uh, I just want to tell you that, that that's, 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 that's wrong uh, because you are, you, you're contemplating, you, you're, uh, you're planting seeds of fear in your life. And fear, God absolutely commanded us not to be afraid. So you can't go to horror films. You can't watch horror movies. Especially those that are about the demons. Uh, for example, uh, there there are some, and I just see the you know I just see a flash of a preview, and I and I don't I don't go watch it, but about uh, exorcism. You know you got a basically got a Catholic priest, and he uses uh, w truly he uses exorcism. He uses uh, ritual si rit you know symbols, religious symbols and rituals to try to get the devil to come out. So he'll have a big cross maybe a big Bible, maybe some holy water and some holy oil. And ultimately the movie uh, is, <laughs> you can tell the movie was inspired by the devil himself because it portrays the devil having more power than he actually does. Now, now I'm, I don't deny that the devil has power in the lives of those people because they are, they, they, they belong to him. And, and I don't question that that, 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 that priest using uh, religious symbols and rituals and holy water, et cetera, that, that it didn't have any much effect on the devil because uh, he's practicing exorcism. Now, we as disciples of Jesus Christ do not practice exorcism. We practice deliverance. There's a difference. Exorcism is exactly what I said, is those people who use religious symbols like crosses or whatever else, and, and they use, you know, uh, holy water or oil or whatever, and they think if they just put that on the person, then the demon will have to come out. No, that's not, that's not what Jesus taught. Jesus taught us that because of His finished work, because of His sacrifice, that He has absolutely delivered us from the power of darkness. That's Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. He delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of God's Son. So I am in the kingdom of God. Now, what may be true for them is not true for me. I'm not in the kingdom of darkness. It has no power over me. It has no authority to work in my life. Understand that. That what's true for them is not true for me. Because of what I know and what I believe that's found in the Bible regarding the redemption of Christ. Amen? You need to know that. So I don't practice, I don't practice exorcism, I practice deliverance. Now, in my travels all over the world, we've encountered, we've encountered demons on many occasions, not only in abroad in other countries, but right here, right here in America as well. And, uh, but God has given us authority over them, and we cast them out. Now, here's my deal. We don't go looking for them. Our point is, is to carry the gospel to the world, to lead people to Christ to be saved. But when we're doing that, you're going to run into people that need deliverance. And there'll be people that come that hear about what God is doing that know they need deliverance. They, they know they're tormented, they're harassed by even in their dreams they're harassed. I remember one time being in, in, a, in a, actually in Zambia and there was a young lady there and, uh, and we had, actually we were praying for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and a crowd had responded to the altar 
And I was on the left-hand side, and I was laying hands on people. And when I laid hands on her, all of a sudden, it was like a man's voice that spoke up out of her and said, she's my wife. I, she belongs to me. So obviously, what ensued then was, was, a, was a deliverance session. Well, I wasn't using religious symbols or, or, or holy water or oil. What was I using? I was using the authority that Jesus gave me. I was using the authority that Jesus gave me in his name. Jesus defeated the devil and rose to the dead and gave me power over all demons. And so I took authority over that demon. And I won't tell you all the details, but I took authority over that demon. I cast that spirit out of her. And that thing began to come out and began to say, please don't send me out. Please don't send me out. But no, I commanded to go and it had to go. And it left her. And as soon as it left her, I led her in, her in a prayer to receive Christ. And not only was she born again, but she was baptized in the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, th the reason why she had come is because every night she was having dreams. And in her dream, there was a dog that was chasing her and biting her in her dreams. And so she's tormented in her dream. That was a demon. That was, that was an unclean spirit. And the way it got into her was she was being, as a child, was molested by an uncle. And that molestation had continued for some time. And so once she was free of that, this tormenting spirit was harassing her and harassing her. And so that's what drove her to church. She came to church looking for freedom. She heard that there were people there that believed in prayer and the power of God. She came Hallelujah. And she found deliverance. Praise the Lord. She was delivered and set free. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So God has commanded us concerning the enemy, the devil, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Amen. Do not be dismayed. Do not be intimidated. Now, intimidation is something the devil tries to use all the time. He wants you to think that he's way bigger than he is. He wants you to think he has way more power than he has. He wants you to think that, that he is an invincible enemy and that you might as well just give up the fight, fly the white flag, and quit. But the moment you get the, you know, you pull the, the veil back and actually see him for what the Bible says he is, and you see him in the light of what Jesus did to him when he rose from the dead, your whole attitude changed. Amen. Instead of being intimidated, the moment you recognize there's a devil there, you're going to be, you're going to be uh, empowered. You're going to be emboldened because you know, you know you have authority over that devil and you can cast him out no matter what he says. Now I want to say to you that I think, I think 100% of the time, every time we've ever cast out demons and the demons actually spoke through the person, they don't all speak, but when they actually spoke to the person, almost 100% of the time, they told me that I did not have the power to cast them out. They all say that. I finally got to the point where I said, wow, you all say that, but you keep, we keep casting you out. <laughs> Amen. It always worked out. So they're liars. They're liars. And they're pretenders. And they want to capture your imagination and make you think they got more power than they have, they can do a lot more than they can, and make you think you're nothing, you have no power. But when you get a revelation of the redemption through Christ, again, I'm referring back to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, it says that he has, he has delivered us, freed us from the power of darkness, from the authority of darkness, and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. I'm not in that kingdom anymore, I'm in the kingdom of light, and light always has dominion and power over darkness. Amen. Just turn the light on in your room at night and see what happens. Darkness is gone in a second. Hallelujah. God has given us that power. He's given us that power. Amen. Praise the Lord. But superstition has got to go. It's got to go. Absolutely got to go. Now, I want to take you to a scripture here in the New Testament that's found in uh, 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians, and I really encourage you that when this broadcast is over and you finish listening to it, or you just hit pause and go look it up, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul here is talking about, a, in, in the days of, of you know, Corinthians was written, it was a very controversial issue in those days 
Because many of the people in the church had come out of idolatry, renounced idolatry, and gotten saved. And so, but, but I, want, I, want to, I want to read through this scripture for just a moment. And, uh, and I, want you, I want you to get a picture. Now, what I want you to do is, I, when I read this, I'm going to stop and explain one little, one, a couple points. But I want you to get the picture of what Paul is saying. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read... Uh, verse, uh, ver beginning with verse 2. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. That, but if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Therefore, verse 4, therefore concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know, Paul says we know, there's something that we know, all right? Therefore concerning the eating of things offered to idols, he said we know. What does Paul say we know? That an idol is nothing in the world. It's nothing in the world, and there is no other God but one. So Paul said, I know that. This idol is nothing, and there's really only one God, and that's God, and he created everything. He created everything. Okay. But even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords that are so-called, he said, yet for us, for us, we know, for us, there is one God, the Father, and of whom are all things, of whom means he created everything, all right? So if he created everything, that means he has dominion over everything, right? Of him are all things, I'm going to find my place, of him, of him are, for there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we, and, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ through whom, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. Okay, verse 7, however, not everybody knows this. As simple as what he just said there, Paul says, however, there, are, there is not in some everyone that knowledge for some. With consciousness of the idol. So for that person, it boils down to their awareness. It boils down to their consciousness. So that when they see an idol, they see a God. Paul said, when I see an idol, I don't see anything. It's just a sculpture. It's nothing. Paul said, because there's actually, for us, there's only one God and one Lord Jesus Christ, and from, from him comes everything, okay? However, there's not in everyone that knowledge, knowledge. So what is true for Paul is not true for everybody. Because why? Because Paul has a revelation, because Paul has a revelation that has lifted him to a place of dominion. So it doesn't apply to Paul, right? So let me, let me keep reading here. However, there is not in everyone this, that knowledge for some with consciousness of the idol until now eat it as a thing offered to an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled. But food does not commend us to God for neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat, are we the worse? But beware, lest someone, that somehow this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. Watch this. For if anyone, verse, it's verse, uh, verse 10. Now watch this. For if anyone sees you, stop right there. So Paul is saying that there, there's a difference. There's, there's those like us who know this point. There's only one God and idol is nothing. And all things come from God. Hallelujah. He said, but not, not everybody knows this. And he says right here. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Verse 10. For if anyone sees you. So he's putting you in the place of the person who has the revelation. Right? If anyone sees you who have this knowledge. Eating in an idol's temple. Will not the conscience of him who is weak be emboldened to eat those things offered to idols? Did you see that? He has you who has the knowledge that there's only one God, idols are nothing, and, and, uh, and, uh, and everything created by God. He says you have this knowledge and he has you sitting inside of an idol's temple at the table eating the meat. So here you are, you realize, wow. I'm born again, I'm spirit filled, I'm washed in the blood, hallelujah. And this guy goes into the idol's temple and sits down and has a meal, has a meal and it doesn't affect him. He don't leave oppressed, 
He don't leave depressed. He don't leave there and, and demons follow him home and get on his wife and get on his kids. Nothing of that matter happens. Nothing. But then the other guy is weak. Why is he weak? Because he doesn't have the revelation. He doesn't have the revelation. So for him, he couldn't eat the meat offered to idols. Why? Because he has a consciousness of the idol. He has a, you want to say it this way? He has a superstition. He has a fear of the idol and the spirit that it represents. So if he eats the meat offered to the idol, he's eating it as if it were offered to an idol. And so therefore, it's going to affect him. So you have here a picture in the Bible of one that is strong and one that is weak, right? The strong one goes into the idol's temple and sits down and has a meal and doesn't think anything about it because the, the, the meal that he's eating is food. It's, it's, I don't know, maybe it's a steak. But the steak comes from a cow and the cow was created by God who ate grass that was created by God, that breathed air that was created by God. And so he eats the, the meat as a thing that came from God who created it. For him, the idol is nothing. The idol is nothing. Amen. So, but, but the other guy, he can't do that because in his own mind, in his own imagination, in his own superstition, the idol is actually something. There's a spirit behind it. And so therefore, if he eats that meat, then wow, then he's going to leave that, that temple oppressed. He's going to leave that temple uh, you know, with demons following home, getting on his wife, getting on his kids and, and harassing. He's going to have bad dreams and, and all of that. Wow. Just think about it. Just stop a moment. Think about that. What's the difference? The difference is what they know and what they believe. What's true for one is not true for the other because the other person doesn't have the revelation. I'm here to tell you right now, if you get the revelation that God is the creator and there's only one God who gave his son Jesus and Jesus came and with his sacrifice, he redeemed you from the power of hell. He redeems you from the power of the devil. Jesus crushed his head. He, he spoiled principalities and powers. He destroyed, Hebrews 2.14, he destroyed the devil that had one time had the power of death. Jesus did that and he did it for you. And then Jesus came to live inside of you, praise God. And that power is alive inside of you. Listen, I want to tell you that strength will come up inside of you. And every fear will flee away. And superstition will be a thing of the past. Hallelujah. It'll be a thing of the past. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And so you're not, it's not going to worry you. I'm telling you, listen to me. The problem is the fear. The problem is the fear. It's the fear that connects you to oppression. But the moment you get the revelation, the understanding, let me not use the word revelation, let's use the word understanding, okay? That's a better word, actually. You have the knowledge, you have the understanding. That's what Paul said, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So what do you do? I mean, I'm telling you that this knowledge has propelled me <laughs> to go all over the world, amen? I've gone into, I've gone into, into villages where the, you know, you, you, some of the people in the city in Africa, you have the, the believers in the city, they won't go to the villages. Listen, I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. The, some of the believers in the city will not go to the villages. Why not? Because they're afraid of the witch doctors. They're afraid of the witch doctors. Well, me, <laughs> hallelujah, amen. I would say little old me, amen, with a knowledge of Christ's redemption and the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. Man, point me in the right direction. I'm headed that way already, praise God. Amen. I've gone into villages. I've gone into villages. I've, I've gone into villages where I, I would say nobody ever preached before. I went into a village one time and they were gathered on this big, big African tree. And there's probably three or four, five hundred people there. And, uh, and this was right near, near, in Zambia, but right near the border of Malawi. And I'm telling you what, I was told there were three or four witch doctors in the crowd. Well, I didn't know the difference. It didn't even matter to me. They're just people that need Christ. They need deliverance. Amen. And so I preached the gospel. I preached the gospel. And when I started praying for the people, the power of God hit the place. Hallelujah. And demons began to manifest. We started casting out demons. There was one young man fell on his face. In the, he was about a 17-year-old young man. And he's, he's, he's crawling like a snake. 
and I'm just walking, you know, I'm kind of walking right beside of him, just watching him crawl like a snake. And I said to people, where's he going? You know, and those, those, uh, those people seem to have the understanding he's headed, for the, he's headed for the river. You know, I don't know what that means. I've asked before and I don't, I don't understand it totally. Except I think they worship the river as a god and so therefore it has meaning to them. Uh, but it's just a river to me that God created. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now here's the thing. I've gone to those villages and dealt with situations just like that and have never had a demon follow me home. Never had a demon follow me home. <laughs> Not one demon ever followed me home and got on my wife. Not one demon ever followed me home and got on my kids. Amen. Not one demon ever followed me home and I, and I, I, I was troubled or harassed in my dreams. This didn't happen. Praise God. I'm telling you, when you have a consciousness, not of the idol, not of the demon, not of that world, you have a consciousness of Jesus, a consciousness of his kingdom, a consciousness of his power living and dwelling inside of you. I'm telling you, you want to stand on the highest building and shout, amen, and tell people, Jesus is king. Jesus is king. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And challenge every witch doctor, challenge every witch doctor to come. Because our compassion knows that these men or women are sinners that need a Savior. And they, they're, they're practicing the dark arts of magic and, 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 and all of that stuff. And in their world, there's a, there's a level of power. There's no question about that. But it doesn't work in my world because I've been delivered from the power of darkness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, I, want you, I challenge you, get your Bible and go there and read and study 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And mark the line between those people who know and those people who do not know. And what this person knows, who knows what he's conscious of, and the person who does not know and what he's conscious of. Amen. It's what they're practicing in their consciousness because of what they believe. And their imagination of how they see and how it works. Praise the Lord. There's deliverance in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that's our teacher. Opens our eyes to see the truth. God, and gives us strength and power. We rise up with no fear in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.